Hey everybody, it's Brock and we got a brand new episode of All About. Hope everybody's having a wonderful weekend. Today we are learning all about the spotted garden eels or the Haas's spotted garden eels. These things are awesome to watch. You usually see them out at the aquariums, about 20 of them across the land just poking their heads out and ducking back under whenever you pass by the tank. They are a lot of fun to watch and you can actually take care of them in your own tank. Prices I was seeing around online, they seem to be pretty hard to get nowadays, but you'd either be spending about $40 to about $70. So it did have a bit of a range there if you could find one in stock. Tank size, I'd recommend at least a 55 gallon. That gives them plenty of room to dig those burrows and have plenty of room to swim around whenever they are out. Care level, I would say they're pretty hard to experts to take care of, mainly because of how you have to build your tank. And then also trying to get them to eat and feed and just thrive throughout their life in the tank setting. Temper, very peaceful, almost, you know, shy, especially whenever you come up to the tank and they're diving back under the sand. So he's very, very peaceful. So you want to put him with other very, very peaceful fish. You don't want triggers in there or things that are just tearing up the sand bed down at the bottom, freaking them out. So you really want some peaceful guys in there to share the tank with them. Or you can just have a tank specifically for them. Reef compatibility with caution. Main reason for this is just because of how much they dig in those burrows that can cause the rock structure to move or fall or bury other corals in the sand. But they're not actually going to like pick at your corals. They're not actually going to like bite them or go after them. But a lot of people have a lot of trouble keeping them above the sand whenever they have these guys in there because they just dig so much in it and usually those corals end up getting buried. Temperature, you want to keep it 72 to 78 and everything's basic. On the temperature wise, DKH 8 to 12, pH 8.1 8.4 and your salinity 1.020 to 1.025. Max size, they can actually get a whole foot long, sometimes even longer. So very long, very skinny little eel in your tank so you want to have plenty of room for them to be able to dig under and also have enough room for that entire body to be you know in the tank colors on them is that white yellowish body with the black polka dots all over them some of them even have a bit of a green or a blue tint to them so they're very pretty to see diet so they are carnivore this is probably where people have most of their trouble is trying to get them to eat most of the time, we recommend people getting live foods for them to eat, especially when first introducing them into the tanks. So if you have a way to get some live ghost shrimp, they love those. They really go after those most of the time. And then, of course, you want to mix in there, you know, your brine, your mice shrimp as well so that you can get them on something else other than just live food eventually. But you really want some live food. Live shrimp are really good to entice them to eat even if you can get some small feeder fish that are small enough to go and be able to eat in their mouth, get those as well, because they'll eat those up. Origin, so they do come all over the world, Indo-Pacific mostly, but people have even seen them over in Hawaii. Compatibility, just ask, like I said, they're a very, very peaceful fish, so you want to put them with other very, very peaceful fish as well, not ones that are going to be picking at each other, trying to fight, be aggressive over territory. You really want some nice, peaceful fish together with them. Otherwise, they'll be up under the sand their whole life. These eels spend a majority of their day poking their heads in and out of the sand bed in the tunnels they have built. So if you're not seeing one, he's probably deep down below digging tunnels out. You know, if you think about it, if he was, you know, six inches long, he's got to dig a pretty deep sand bed to hold that whole body over there so that just his little head's poking, you know, three or four inches out. For the special tank requirements, you want to have a very, very deep sand bed. So I would recommend at least getting six inches deep of sand bed. That way they have plenty of sand to go and dig down and be able to hide their entire body and just be able to poke their head out. You also want to make sure you get the right kind of sand. You want a very soft, soft textured sand. You don't want to be putting, you know, crushed coral in there, anything like that because they won't be able to dig their burrows like they need to. So very, very soft sand will get the job done for them and have them digging in very easily, won't scratch up their skin or anything like that. You want a very gentle current. 
because more current blowing on that sand bed can bury them up under the burrows and that just will stress them out. So make sure you have a very gentle current going over the top. You also want very limited on your rock structure because with them digging so much, it's kind of like those engineer gobies that dig constantly throughout the day. They'll dig certain holes and if you have a really big rock structure in the tank, he digs the wrong hole and that rock crushes him, you know, he's stuck up under there. So like you see in the video, I mean, it's just a gigantic sand bed. And then you have a little structure over here, a little structure over here, just to kind of still mimic that tank setting as it is in the ocean for them. Also make sure you have glass lids. They do jump, they can escape. They are an eel at the end of the day and eels are very bad about trying to find a way out of the tank. So make sure you have nice, strong glass lids on top of the tank, heavy enough to keep them out. And then if you have to get those little plastic strips to put around your filters if you have anything overhanging. You also gotta be really careful when cleaning the tank if you're one that's used to sifting your sand with the siphon tubes. You kind of have to stray away with that with these because you'll end up just burying a bunch of them and messing up their burrows. So most of the time you're literally just sucking water out and then, you know, just brushing the sand with your hand real lightly on top to keep it clean, keep that detritus, you know, pushed up and filtered out. But you don't want to get in there with a siphon tube and start messing up their caverns. After that, that's pretty much all you need to know to take care of them at the start. You know, good high level on taking care of these garden eels. Main things to take away is make sure you have some live food on hand to try to entice them to eat at the beginning. And then also, you just really got to build a tank specific to them, kind of like a seahorse. You got to have that super, I mean, nobody has six inches of sand in a normal tank. So this is definitely particular to them and then just make sure you got your glass lids on top and the sand is soft enough for them to dig those burrows and not get scratched up. If you've ever taken care of these before or you have some other insight on them, please leave it down below. The more knowledge we learn from each other, the better we are in this hobby. Hope you all have a wonderful day. Thanksgiving's coming up. I hope you all have a great time with y'all's family. Make sure to like and subscribe and I will see y'all later. Hey everybody, it's Brock and today's video is sponsored by Dream Team Forever. Make sure to check out our website as we just released the first ever All About Tees that feature 30 fish and inverts from the series. Click the link in the description to get some for you and your family.